My chosen topic is probability. With probability, the language used is as important as the numbers represented. The type of language can cause confusion with students, making it vital for them to understand the key terms. There are also several misconceptions around the topic, which would need to be dispelled prior to a true understanding occurring. The recent expansion of probability in the curriculum and the misconceptions surrounding this topic led me to want to deepen my knowledge in this area. Probability has its place in strand one, probability and statistics of both the junior certificate and the leaving certificate. What is probability? Simply put, it is how likely something is to happen. It can be measured in two ways, either as a fraction or decimal between zero or one, or as a percentage. Probability explores the concept of uncertainty and outlines how we can only predict the chance of an event occurring. Students in the Leaving Certificate will explore the rules of probability, including distinguishing between the terms and or mutually exclusive events and independent events. They will also use some or all of the addition and multiplication rules while investigating Bernoulli's trials. Probability is studied in every year group, but my lesson today will be aimed at students studying ordinary level maths in fifth year. I want students to be able to recognise the existence of probability in their everyday life. It is very likely that they will be using probability daily, but will be unaware of this, such as, what are the chances of it raining? Will I need to bring a coat? In this particular lesson, I want to reinforce the basic concepts they covered in their junior certificate, while focusing on the key concepts of distinguishing different types of events. Full comprehension of the keywords and concepts in probability is vital prior to exploring more difficult aspects. If their foundations are not strong, they will struggle as the topic evolves. Some prior knowledge that the students would have gained from their studies in their junior certificate are the scales used to measure probability, the language around certainty and uncertainty, using set theory to discuss experiments and outcomes, but this will depend on what level they studied at for the junior certificate, estimate the probability of an outcome from experimental data, and associate the probability of an event with relative frequency. The language and logic around probability can be difficult for any age level to comprehend, in particular the difference between independent events and mutually exclusive events. Being able to distinguish between these two types of events and discern which is involved in each problem will inform the concepts and formulas used to predict the outcome. I believe students may find this quite difficult as the correct association of this may go against their own natural intuition or what they believe may be true. If they have preconceived ideas as to what constitutes each type of event, then I would need to encourage them to unlearn these and put in place the correct rationale. The unlearning of previous ideas could be quite difficult for students, as it will challenge them to recognise and question their own bias and perceptions. This will lead to them learning to ignore their instincts in certain cases and approach the problem with a new outlook. It would be probable that most, if not all of the students, will have a preconceived notion as to what defines both of the events mentioned above. The objective of this lesson would be to assess the student's knowledge and understanding of two basic probability concepts they would have covered within their junior certificate, measurement and the language used around events. The second objective is to expose any preconceived ideas they may have around probability based statements, in particular the concept of independent events and mutually exclusive events. I will begin the lesson by informing the students that we will be covering probability today, that probability falls within strand one of their syllabus along with statistics, and we will be recapping on some elements they would have covered in their junior certificate before exploring the topic in more depth. I will then begin by discussing with the class where in their everyday life do they see or use probability. The phrasing of the statement may cause confusion, so I would offer an alternative, which is, when in your everyday lives would knowing the chance of something happening affect your actions and decisions? Now this should open up a classroom based discussion and some sample examples I would give would be a teacher says you may have a test next week. What will you do? A teacher says you will have a test next week. What will you do? I would then move on and briefly revise the keywords used in probability. 
certainly, extremely likely, equally likely, etc. At this point, I would split the class into groups of three and ask each group to write down three events which are certain to happen, three events which are certain not to happen, and three events which may or may not happen. Now, while they are completing this task, I would walk around the room and try and assist individuals where possible, asking further questions to try and guide them to the correct answers. Once the task is complete, I would ask for suggestions from the group and make a list of such on the board. Moving on from there, we would briefly review the measurements used in probability. I would then assess the class by asking a series of questions, such as, if we were to toss a coin, what is the chance of getting a tails? Instead of giving 0% as the chance of something happening, what other number could we use instead? After these, I would offer a couple more leading questions to see if they've really understood the basic concept. For example, if I say that the chance of it raining tomorrow is 2.7, is this possible? We would then move on to our next activity, where I would ask them to evaluate several probability statements. Working separately, using green, red and yellow pages, they must allocate either true, false or unsure to each statement. The aim of this is to get a deeper understanding of their level of preconceived notions by using working scenarios that would draw on what they may believe to be true. It is also an implicit way of introducing independent and mutually exclusive events. An example of some of these statements would be, if I roll a fair six-sided die, it is harder to roll a one than a six. If a family already has three girls, then the next baby is more likely to be a boy. I would have six to eight of these statements and allow some time for the students to consider each before allocating their verdict. After each statement was put to them, we would have a class-wide discussion as to why they chose their respective answers. Time taken with the previous activity would dictate whether I bring the class to a conclusion, revisit some of the topics already covered, or introduce a new topic of independent events from the statements in the previous exercise. If time allowed, I would have a number of activities ready for choice C. I would conclude the class by summarising what we have covered. Probability is about uncertainty and assigning a measurement to that uncertainty. Probability can be measured on a scale between 0 and 1 in a decimal or a fraction, or by using a percentage. Probability statements are not always what they seem, and sometimes you need to look a little closer. Not everything in maths is certain. I would then briefly introduce what we will cover in the next lesson based on the outcome of the final activity. Either we would introduce independent events and mutually exclusive events, or further review the basics of probability, including independent events. I would favour teaching, learning and assessment strategies that allow for verbal discussions amongst the entire class and its smaller peer groups. So pair, small group work and structured discussions give students the opportunity to speak in a smaller group if they feel more comfortable and also allows students to discuss items on a class wide level in a structured format. Brainstorming and facts and falsehoods allow students to explore the language used in a creative manner and can also help recognise and challenge any preconceived notions that they may have. So conversations and questions and answers can be used as a very good gauge as to how much difficulty, if any, students are having with any particular topic. I want to develop a communication with the students. By using class level discussions, small group work and brainstorming, the intention is to foster an environment where students feel like they can communicate openly and coherently. I also want to work on working with others. The use of small group work and pair work will expose students to each other. This leads to the deepening of listening skills, communication skills, managing themselves and will aid in garnering respect for others and their opinions. Lastly, I want to develop information processing and critical thinking with students. The facts and falsehoods activity will aid in this as they will be given information that they have to process and then examine critically. This activity will also develop their communication skills. I believe that the language used and the preconceived ideas that students may have will be the most challenging aspects of teaching the subject. To overcome the challenge that language brings, I would continually discuss and reinforce the keywords, using a variety of representations of probability questions and statements to familiarise the students with the terms that need to be focused on. 
The goal is to enable them to be able to decide what is relevant and irrelevant information in any given question. Now, the challenges surrounding preconceived ideas might be slightly trickier to overcome. I believe the most appropriate way to tackle these is to create activities such as the facts and falsehoods activity, where these ideas can be recognised and challenged. Now, this would need to be done in an encouraging manner so as not to alienate the pupils and to not make them feel overly criticised. In strand one, probability sits with statistics. Both are exceptionally closely linked and they have direct links to business studies. So that would include the analyzing of market data in economics due to the study of the stock market, populations, and it's typically a data and graph heavy subject. Also have ties to accounting in relation to financial analysis and predicting the future profit of a company. 